Hey everyone, Sire here. I decided to try something different this time. Um, for the past couple weeks, I have been trying to do something different. And what it is, is taking a paper pad and trying to make as many cards as you can with it. Um, this is something that I've seen a YouTuber, Christian Marcotte, um, do. And it always looks so inspiring to see to, to remove all the paper pads that you have to make as many cards as you can. Um, and I really like that idea. S but what I did was I went to Michael's and I bought this uh, paper pad. Normally I would buy just a 6x6, six six, but they didn't have any Easter 6x6 six six paper pads. So I wanted to try this challenge, um, so I just bought this 12x12. 12 12. The only problem with that is you now have a lot more to work with instead of just one six by six. Um, the other thing I wanted to try with this was to play around with all the little um, and tools that I have. Um, get creative, learn new techniques. Um, so that's what it is. So it's gonna be an interesting um, outcome because it's just all over the place. At least that's what I feel. Um, but I just wanted to try different techniques while trying to use up all the paper pad. There are some sheets I did not use, um, like the big ones like this. I left those alone. Um, I didn't know what to do with them. Here's another one. Um, I mean, I could have cut that out, but for this this tutorial or for this um, video, I decided not to include these big ones. But what I did was I removed all of the pattern papers, and it is only single sided, and I cut them six by six. So that's why I have this big sheet here and then a six by six. And I only worked pretty much a quarter of it because I only used a six by six. And I really like this paper. It's um, very Eastery, has some nice soft colors. Um, but, so there we go. I have a bunch of little patterns and stuff like that. This video will be long. I'm going to try to knock it down as much as possible um, by speeding it up um, and I will see if I can just um, create little breakpoints where you can just jump to the ones that you want um, but I just wanted to give an intro of what I plan on doing so sit back enjoy and I hope you see something that you like thank you so much so this is card number one. I am going to move very fast on this. This is sped up six times. So the total time is about 45 minutes. Um, and if there's anything that I see that stands out from the rest of the cards, I'll, I'll try to make mention of it. But um, yeah, this is gonna be very quick just to show you all the little cards that I have made. All the cards are for or A2 size. So they'll either be top folding or side folding. Um, that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches long. And I use uh, Nina's 80 pound cardstock. I don't know if that's what everyone else is using. That's just what I happen to get on hand. Um, this one's very simple. Just using the pattern paper that was already given. It was a square and I cut a double side circle in it. Um, double stitch I should say and then I just glued it back on these gems that I am using was part of Simon Says stamp coll or card collection of last month and then I'm using some Nouveau drops I'm not sure what color that is it's just some dark blue um, and then the strip of sticker that I put on the bottom that's love from Lizzie's peel off stickers and they are amazing there was um, a sale on last month for free shipping so I grabbed some Card number two, I did fussy cut out that little chicken that's coming out of the egg. So all that's left is just the tiniest bit of white. I trimmed it all back and because um, I liked seeing both sides. I, I like seeing through it. I didn't want to see the white. So I'm using some of the peel off stickers again to make a division between the different pattern, types of pattern paper. And this is a, a translucent pink glitter peel off sticker which is really nice i'm also i'm using that um, die again it's a double stitch die from lawn fawn and then i'm going to just uh, adhere with a foam tape um, 
onto that circle and I'm going to put it on top. A lot of these cards, or I should say some of these cards, are inspired by um, uh, sketches, uh, mainly uh, my favorite thing sketches. They were the ones that just seemed to be easiest to grab a hold of. I do have a lot of rainbow sequences from Doodlebug, so all the cards that you'll see probably will end up using these sequences. They come in a, a wide variety of colors, um, and really it's the only embellishment that I have currently other than some Nouveau drops. For card number three, I created this um, from my Cricut. Um, I designed it, I found an image, and I, I made three layers out of it, or four technically because there's the background. And the inspiration for this was um, birch press designs. I noticed that they have a lot of um, dyes that come in, in layers, and I thought I would try making something doing that. So I designed it on my computer, and then I just kept increasing the size so that I can get three layers and then the background. So I just glued those all together with my arc glitter glue using the pattern paper. Um, these, the eggs was a strip. It wasn't pattern a whole sheet, it was just a strip and so I, I'm using that up and I'm going to adhere that to the card and then prop this up with some foam tape in the center of the card. The, the matte color is um, Banana Split, or Banana Sun, I think it's called, or Banana Split Pop Tone Cardstock. <clears throat> and there we go. And then I will grab some of the glossy accents and just put it on all the little eggs where it says Hoppy Easter. And that just gives a little bit more shine on it. This one was actually a flop. Um, <laughs> I was working on it and I made a mistake. I didn't cut certain things correctly, so I just decided to go with it. Um, so that's the strip that I'm gonna put down the center actually doesn't fit, and that was the whole problem. It doesn't cover the circle because I wanted to, um, it's part of a design, one of the sketches, and you're supposed to put the, I just wanted that green circle, but it didn't cover it fully, so I'm just gonna put the circle back on, take that, strip that's not wide enough and then put the circle back on so it covers the white spot behind it. And I just thought it was kind of neat. Um, not my favorite, but I tried something new, um, trying to recover from the mistake I had. Now here is um, a little die cut or um, embellishment that I've just decided to take all the eggs off instead of having the pink. And then I'm just going to glue them into the center. And um, I believe it should actually say hop or peep hop yay or hop peep yay. I, I lost track. Um, but I'm just going to glue those um, down. But what I realized is that my foam stickers were a little bit too high. Um, so I'm snipping them in half um, so that they're not propped up too high. And then what I realized then is also I put the eggs too high. So I'm going to move those back down, you'll see. In a second, I'll move them back down because I accidentally put them a little too high and I didn't like that. It did kind of warp the paper, but um, it's not too bad. The thing about this pattern paper is that it is not very forgiving. It will shred once you glue it and, and try to rip it up. Um, these little strips were also part of a sheet of strips, so I've had uh, cut those down and I'm just going to glue them to the side just to cut up that green so there's not so much green. And also I want to use up every single piece of paper that I possibly can, so <laughs> I have to figure out where to put it. And for that one I believe I just leave it as is and I don't add any more to it. Nope. I do add more. I add some pink and some yellow sequences to this. Now each of these sequences does come in a wide variety of shades and shine and some are translucent. Um, so what I try to do is find the colors that match the paper the best. Um, because there's gold foil, I did use some of the gold sequences and um, some more of the opaque light pale pinks and a pale yellow. Um, I don't have a, pad, uh, a design, I just throw the sequences wherever. Card number five. I have some of the shiny corduroy type paper um, in my stash, and I have a whole bunch of colors, and I'm going to use it again in another card, but um, I decided to use that up because I have it, and just to make it a little different from the rest of the cards. 
these pendants did come in a collection. It was a, it was once again it was a strip of of these, and I just cut out three of them. Um, I didn't want the background. I just wanted the pendant itself, and I'm just adding some layering just because that pink corduroy is a little bit higher up. So I just need that little lift so it's not sagging. And I'm just going to glue those all underneath this image, which also was a des uh, just one of the dies. Um, I'm not really sure what you call them. I I'm saying die, but it's one of the cutouts. There we go. One of the cutouts. And then I'm just going to glue this right onto the full A2 size card. And then I'm going to add a bunch of colors. And this one is going to be more of the rainbow weed pastel color. So it's the green, blue, yellow, and pink which matches all the little eggs in the background and inside the basket. For this one, that distressed ink, which was called Gathered Twigs, I did make that paper myself. So what I did was I, I added some water, I put some ink on a mat and I added some water and then I had two style paintbrushes and I just splattered it. And the whole point was to try to create um, an egg. Um, so almost like a robin's egg. Um, but that's what I was trying to go for, and I had a lot of fun with that. That was kind of neat, um, but I only did make the one sheet. Um, the hip, a hop peep yay, that is a banner that was on one of the sheets, strips, so I cut that down to match um, the bottom. And then these yellow strips are also part of the strip page that I'm using up, and I'm gonna put those horizontally on the background. Um, the background mat is snow cone. I no, no, this is just some teal recollection paper that I got from Michaels. And it, it all matches pretty well with that um, banner on the back and then the blue east, the blue egg paper that I created. I'm going to glue this to the um, A2 size card. It's going to be the full size four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm going to take some Love From Lizzie stickers, Sway stickers, these are the mirror gold, and I'm going to put that to divide the, the two colors. And it just adds a nice little trim, um, not too busy, but it does match all the other gold that's on that paper, which I just love these peel-off stickers. Once again, I am going to grab some of my Doodle Bug sequences, the blue and the brown this time, and I'm just going to randomly put them on the paper and then um, glue them on. I don't know if there's if other people have a, a method to their madness, but I don't. <laughs> I just put them on and um, let them go. And I'm going to use some more glossy accents onto that Easter egg just to give a little bit of shine. Card number seven. I created that bunny once again with the cricket, so I won't show it. I've already created it off screen to save some time, but all those little pieces were glued on to a black background. Um, and by doing so, it creates the outline of the Easter Bunny. Um, I do sell these on my Etsy page. Um, if you are interested, um, you can check that out. But I absolutely love making dies like that. Um, and so since I had them on hand, I decided to use them on some of my cards. All this paper is from the collection. Um, the background paper is, I believe, um, Razzleberry by pop tone color, and I've matted the back and the center piece of paper or centerpiece um, with that color. I'm just going to prop up my bunny cutout with some foam tape, and this is just some generic non or non name no name generic brand that I have in my stash. It's very sticky. I'm not a big fan. I can't wait to be done with it. Um, it really gunks up my <laughs> scissors. Um, but almost done. And then we'll just put the high there banner, which I've cut the background off of. It was a cutout, um, but I trimmed off all the background. And then I'm going to just um, lift it up with some scrap piece of paper so that it doesn't sag on the layers and um, glue that underneath the, the little pink bunny, or the bunny with the pink hat. Oh, I just, I really like those bunnies. They are fun to make and they're really cute. And I'm just going to leave it with that. And then I'm not going to add any more to that. For cards eight and nine, I made two cards and I'm using this Lawn Fawn 
mini Easter egg kit card, or sorry, dies that I got at a local craft store. They were on sale at the time, um, so I decided to purchase some. And I'm just going to use my on point glue to glue these onto the back. So the die comes with a solid and a bunch of designs, and so you just have to glue them on. And this glue um, is, has a very fine tip. The only problem is once you glue it on the paper, you, you can't move it, otherwise that glue just gets undone. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's almost like a water base. So as long as you don't maneuver it, once you put it down, don't touch it, um, it, will glue very, it will glue fine. But if you try moving it like liquid glue, it will um, it will just uh, peel right off and, lo and lose all of its stickiness. Because I'm working on two cards at once, I'm just going to glue all these eggs at the same time. Um, these colors are just for my stash. It's not the pattern paper that came with the kit. Um, and I believe these are all recollection paper that I have. For the center, I did die cut that out with um, a stitched rectangle, and I'm just going to glue it onto some pattern paper. And then same thing with the second card on top of that gold foil bunny pink paper. I will change these up. I did already glue them off, but off camera I just cut some more because I realized that I didn't like the color choices for that particular card. Um, it just wasn't flowing well, that blue and everything. It just, I don't know what I was thinking. So I will change those up. But first, I'm going to take some of those translucent pink glitter Lizzie, Love From Lizzie peel-offs, and I'm going to just create a divider between that cutout Happy Easter sentiment. Glue that down just with some art glitter glue, and then and this is where I'm going to realize I want those Easter eggs different colors. It, the blue just does not match, nor does the yellow. So I cut them out with just sh different shades of yellow and pink, and it looks a lot better with these colors. Um, it matches the paper a lot better. I'm going to take um, a piece of that pattern paper just to use it up, um, just measuring out how much it is, um, how big it is, and then I'm just going to put that on the bottom. Just trimming it up just a tiny bit. Just be careful not to trim it too much, and then glue that down. I will prop up these Easter eggs at the top. Um, I'll glue one down, and then I will um, use um, an adhesive square to prop up the one in front. Oh, well, there we go, arc glitter glue and then foam square. I do, I'm not a big fan of these foam squares. Um, they are a little thick. I believe they're probably a quarter of an inch thick because um, the ones I get from scrapping from less were much skinnier and they're probably an eighth or a sixteenth. I'm not sure, to be honest, probably an eighth. So I'm gonna glue this down on cardstock. It is an eighth of an inch border. And now for the second card, I will just put those eggs on um, the bottom, and then I'm just going to create um, a banner, a pendant banner, uh, underneath the sentiment. So just trim that down to um, create that shape, and then I'll glue the Happy Easter sentiment on top of that, and glue the whole thing on top. With And underneath that, I will just prop these up. These are the scrapping scrap book dot com foam adhesives, and you'll notice that they're, they're much lower um, than the last ones I was using. I will glue this onto another A2 size card, leaving an eighth of an inch border um, on the card. And those are the two cards. For cards number 10 and 11, I am using this. This is the double stitch that I was using earlier um, from Lawn Fun. So outside and stitched circle stackables. They're okay. Um, I was thinking that I'd have a little more um, circles. Um, wasn't really thinking about it when I bought it, but I really I, it is a nice thing to have on my my stash. Um, so the, these two cards will be slightly different just because I was using up scrap pieces of paper and um, the circle was cut off on the one side, but 
I've taken some pattern paper and put it on the back to create that plaid, and then I stuck some of those Easter eggs, which was part of one of the banner strips, and just trimmed off all the gold and left just a little bit around the edge. And then I tucked those in into the center. I'm gonna take the Hello Spring strip, which was also one of the strip pages, and I'm going to glue that on top of the circle. And that would be kind of my sentiment for this card. Two more strips um, from the page are then glued to the bottom just to give, just to break it up so it's not a big pink sheet. And I'll glue that onto an A2 side, leaving an eighth of an inch border all around. I did use some stickles. Um, it was Stardust, I believe. Didn't like it, um, at least on the angle I was looking at. It just kind of got hidden, so I just stuck some, <laughs> some more sequences on it. So, um, I don't know if that glitter went through. Um, probably not. It's, you, I think it just lost it. And then the next one that matches this, I'm going to do the same thing with a different background, and that's like kind of a bunch of eggs, I believe, pattern. But I'm also just going to tuck four more eggs in here to create that little nest. And then I will glue that to the side um, instead of in the center. And that's because, like I said, it was cut off when I was using the scraps and I didn't want to waste it. So I decided just to maneuver it and make the card slightly different than the last one, but it tech, it's really the same design. I'm going to put that Hello Spring um, strip on the top there again, but I'm just going to move it over more um, because I can't center it like I did with the last one. And I just put a little bit of foam squares on the side, on the ends there so it stays up. I will come finish with the strips again. Um, same two strips that I used for the last card. Um, and then I will add a little, I would add this to the card with the eighth of an inch uh, border and then add some more sequences to this one to match the card that I had just created previously. I just realized that I need to stop my recording once in a while because the laptop starts getting really noisy um, when I'm recording. So you'll probably hear a difference in the tone. Okay, for card number 12, here's another die cut that I had purchased um, the same time as the Easter eggs. And this is just cut up on some yellow um, cardstock recollection cardstock from Michaels. And I'm just adhering it to a light yellow and then I'm going to put that Happy Easter sentiment in the center there. There's some more of that pink corduroy um, paper that um, I'm going to adhere um, to the back of it. To make this design I've taken two sheets. One is a strip um, from the strip paper and the other one is the pattern paper and I'm just going to put those um, centered in the, uh, in the middle, I'm going to map them centered on the page, but what I'm going to do is trim those down a bit so that they actually have the same border on top, bottom, left, right, <laughs> all around. There we go. And um, so I'll center those two uh, pieces of pattern paper. I really like that gold strip. It kind of gives just a slight little border between the two. Uh, and then the confetti is, is really cute too. I'm just playing around with the placement, but no matter what I do, I don't like it. Um, it's just too wonky. It's um, it's too much. I think squares are a little bit better when you want to do something like that. Uh, and definitely not across two pieces of paper. It just it doesn't flow very well. So what I will do is just adhere that to the back, of, or I'll just uh, hear them together so that it looks like a shiny mat. But I will prop it up with some foam stickers, uh, tape with that, and put it on top of the pink. I will say, um, talking for this long is a lot challenging. <laughs> I was thinking about putting music, um, but you know, you have to be careful with copyright and, and co copyrighted so I don't want to get in trouble with that, so I do need to find some music. Um, but I don't mind talking, it's just it is a little more challenging. I need to drink a lot of water so my mouth doesn't dry up. 
Um, and sometimes I don't know what to say because it's just repeating myself. But anyways, as long as you guys enjoy it, I'm enjoying it. So, so there's some Nouveau drops, some gold that I have. Um, and I just put three dots on the bottom there. I do fix it up, fix it up off camera. For card number 13, there's some more of that corduroy shiny paper. Um, this is the green one. It kind of made me think of carrots and grass. And because I had a bunch of little cutouts that were about um, carrot patches and such, I decided that I would try playing around with this. Not a big fan of this card. I believe it's a little bit hard to see all the pieces, but um, I want, you know, just got to try it. You learn from your mistakes on what doesn't work and what does. Um, so I just won't be making cards like this again, but I do like the design of it. Um, it is a, I believe it, I don't know what number it is, but it is uh, my favorite thing, Sketch. So I've taken all these cutouts and I've um, matted them on different color pieces of paper. And I've taken one of those pendants that was a strip that I've trimmed down all the background and just left a gold border called carrots. And I will glue the Happy Easter little circle there in the corner. So you can see it's kind of busy, um, but I am trying to use all the pieces of paper. And this is on an A2 card size with an eighth of an inch border all around. Going to grab some more of my Doodle Bug sequences, but this time the orange. And I'm looking for the more carrot colors um, and a couple of the mirror ones, not that really bright fluorescent one. Uh, that you can see there in the pile. <clears throat> and I'm going to add some more glossy accents to the carrots just to give a little bit of glossy accents to it. So it's going to be a little bit shiny. And that's that card. Here's another one of my rabbits. Um, I decided to play with my favorite thing stencils that I had purchased. Um, they are, I believe, snowflakes, but it comes with two. Um, and ignore my masking tape. <laughs> I don't actually have any other tape, so I'm using masking tape. I did use my hands to um, remove all the stickiness so that it won't rip the paper when I pull it off. But these are my favorite thing stencils. It comes in two, and I'm just using the different, the two different ones with different color uh, inks. So it's Squeeze Lemonade and um, I believe Mustard Seed. I'm then going to use um, Broken China, and I'm going to add that again with the first um, stencil. And the whole point is I'm trying to use the colors that are being used on the cutout and my die cut on the bunny's hat. Um, so I'm just lightly touching it, just very lightly, so it's not too dark. Um, and what I noticed is it was kind of sparing. Um, so what I decided to do was wipe this down, of course, and grab the other stencil, and I'm going to go over it again with some more of that broken china, but this time I'm going to make it much darker um, so that it creates another shade of blue. So it is the same shade, um, but it's just darker. And that will make the card fill a little bit more. The other thing I'm going to do is just to play around. It's, I don't want it all white, so I'm going to take some antique linen um, distressed ink and I'm just going to cover the whole sheet with this color. What you will notice is that it does push the oxide inks around, so it, it blurs it a bit, and I'm totally okay with that. Um, I'm not looking for perfection, I'm okay with it. I could have let it dry and then that would probably not happen but I'm okay with the blending. I, I actually like it. Um, just, yeah, it's, it's different. I'm gonna take a stitch triangle and I'm gonna cut that out um, and then play around with all the different cutouts that I have. The carrot didn't work, but I decided to keep the, the banner sheet um, and use a stitch die to cut that out so that it kind of matches the stitch die in the center. The only thing I realized, and it wasn't until I started editing this video, that um, my sentiment, <laughs> the hop PBA is now PBA hop. Um, so 
I kind of got it. I didn't realize that until later that, that she was supposed to be a complete sentence, and I I cut it up to make it fit, and now it's not a complete sentence. It's kind of off. But hopefully no one else will notice that. Um, they will just see the color and ignore that. Um, but I'm okay with it. I like actually like how it turned out. Um, just playing around with the different things. I'm going to take some more scrap pieces of of that paper and I want to kind of create like it's the bow that's folded in underneath. You won't see this the, the words, you'll just see that teal color um, behind and what I did put a little too low so I'm going to rip that off. Um, it did rip the paper but that's okay. It's the paper not the card. And I'm just going to glue it back on a little bit higher because like I said I want to pretend it's kind of like a ribbon that is on top and folded behind and on the back. So it's it's giving the illusion that the card is actually a little bit higher than it actually is. I'm going to use some... Okay, I don't know why I did this. Um, nothing wrong with it. I just don't know why I switched from liquid glue to these strips. A lot more time consuming. Um, I couldn't even answer that if... Someone asked me, um, but nonetheless, that's what I did. <laughs> and I'm going to glue that. I'm going to stick that onto the A2 size cards. And that's that for that card. Card number 15. I've taken that carrot from the last one, and I'm going to glue that onto this gold foil blue circled card or a paper. Um, this is definitely a more masculine. Um, card with all the blues and, and greens and I'm doing a prop up this piece of paper that has been matted onto some light blue cardstock recollection once again from Michaels and then I will prop up the sentiment as well and it's just carrot patch it's not a really good sentiment it doesn't mean anything other than carrot patch <laughs> and but like I said, trying to use up everything. I've taken some more Love From Lizzie's. Um, this is a blue, and, or light blue, and I am separating the two pieces of paper, and then I'm gonna map that onto the same color, um, pale blue, I think I called it baby blue, onto an A2 size cardstock. This one's simple, using up some card pieces, um, not, too, not too bad. Now this is 16, 17, 18. I will only make one card and then I'll show you the last one. And this is definitely uh, my favorite things card sketch. Once again, I don't have the number with me. I'm really sorry for that. Maybe if I find it, I'll add it to the comments below. Um, I really should give credit because these card, these sketches are you know created for us to use. So to give credit back to the company, I think is fully fair. So I will look for those. But I also added a sentiment, which was actually from Simon Says, from Card Kit from last month. And it was just, thanks so much. I heat embossed that on a black paper. I really love that. It's one of my favorite things to do right now is white on black card stock. Um, and then add some more sequences. So here's the other two that I, I used. I really like the blue one. Um, it looks really nice. Now we'll be moving to 19, 20, and 21. I'll once again, only make one card, um, but I'll show you um, the other one as well. And this is creating some strips from scrap pieces of paper that I have left because I am running low. I am using a stamp, just inked it, um, once again, from Simon Says Card Kit from last month, and I will glue that to the bottom. Um, the paper that I'm using is actually Ninon's White Confetti, I believe, or Starburst um, paper, and it has little hint specks of color in it. I really like it. Um, it's perfect for birthdays and such, and because I'm using some of that confetti-looking paper, I decided to use it. I'm going to use some of my double-stitched circles and glue those onto um, the page and use some stickles to add some little dots. And now to show you the other two cards um, with different stripes that we had available. Very similar. For card number 22, I'm going to use some oxide, or distress oxides. Um, one is sponge sugar and the other one's picked raspberry. 
I'll start with the sponge sugar and just lightly color the whole base card. And then with the picked raspberry, I'm just going to darken the corners. I'm going to move all this away. I'm going to play with all the cutouts that are kind of left over. So I'm just going to make um, a collage almost of just the different cutouts that were left in what <laughs> left what's or what is left, and I'm just going to stack them and tuck them and just see what I can come or what I can create with. The bunny trail is a pretty big car, uh, cutout, so. I cannot fit it on the card and I will have to trim it, which is a shame uh, because I, I do like it. Um, but luckily it wasn't too bad. I just had to trim the tiniest little piece in the, in, uh, of the tail. So I'll grab all the other little pieces and I'm just going to glue them wherever it, they fit and looks okay. Um, strawberry shortcake, uh, happy Easter peep, <laughs> and then some little eggs that were part of a strip. And that's it. For card number 23 and 24, the sun came out. <laughs> and um, now you can see all the lovely shadows. And this is using up a lot of the little scraps that I had left over. And I'm just taking one inch squares um, and spreading them out. And the stamp or sentiment that I'm using is called, it's Big Hugs. And it's also from the Simon Says card kit from last month, um, which I'm getting confused if that's February or January. Um, I believe it's January's. That's what I... And um, so I stamped that and I did use some clear embossing powder to, um, to give it a little more depth. To do something a little different, I glued it to, I heated it to some black cardstock and then mat or put that onto the card base. And now I'm going to use some gold enamel dots to final it up. I'm going to show you the next card. This one does not have the pink background, but that's because I did not have any left over. And I threw some sequins on it, which I didn't really care for, which is why I didn't put it on the, the other one I showed you. This card is also using up the rest of the scraps. I'm not a, this is, also a card that I'm not a fan of, um, but the challenge is to use as much of the cardstock as possible, and this definitely did it, um, using the circles and and whatnot. I'm just going to glue some of those on. I do have a sentiment, and what I did was I cut off um, the border, so it's just the sentiment and not the background. And then I'm going to glue some height or some just give it some height using some cardstock so that it doesn't sag. And then I'm going to glue that onto um, a card base. Just so you know, this background piece of paper is a doodle bug um, piece of pattern paper that I had found. It just happened to match the pinks. Now I'm going to add some sequences. Uh, these are the, the light blue. For card 26 and 27, um, they're very similar, just slight difference. I used my Cricut to cut out those little circles on the pattern piece of paper, and I matted it to some pink recollection cardstock. I'm going to glue a strip um, on the bottom. This is from the strip page, and it has some gold foil bunnies on it. And then I'm going to take some of those Love from Lizzie peel-offs to just Give um to separate the two board or to separate two pieces of paper or kind of merge them I guess you could say. I'm going to add one of the cutouts onto the top that says "You crack me up," <laughs> and it is gold uh, gold foil. I'm sitting here wondering how to make this better, and I just gave up and I decided to work on the second card. Now this is where I do a little bit different. I take some um, distressed ink. A vintage photo and I'm just going to go over everything every edge and I want to see what will happen um, with the look compared to the one I just created so everything's going to be very similar the sentiment will be different but everything else is going to be the same and I just want to compare the two because I want to know if this makes a huge difference or not uh, mainly because I couldn't figure out how to make the card the last one better off the top of my head so I'm going to glue this on. I'm going to take that bunny strip 
from glue down to the bottom as well. And then I'm going to take some love from Lizzie peel offs and I will put that. So very similar steps as before. And then I'm also going to take that sentiment and, um, and this time I'm actually going to prop it up on a piece of circle cardstock that I had left over. Um, it's the center of one of the other things I've cut. And I'm just doing that just once again to try something different from what I had done from the previous. And I'm gonna prop that up and I'm gonna use the vintage photo again just to keep it consistent and glue it right into the center. So now I'm going to show you the two side by side and I just wanna see, you can kind of tell that the circles on the right are more prominent, they don't hide, um, and the edge. So it does add a little bit. It does make it pop a little more. Um, so just by doing that does help. For card number 28, I'm taking another one of those sentiments. I also cut the background on that. So you just see the yellow Happy Easter. And then I matted it to some dark blue, um, really dark blue. Um, I've also taken that Easter egg and the blue and I've used um, a rectangle die with dots and I've cut them both out. And I'm just going to make them askew a tiny bit. I really like that effect, um, but sometimes it just doesn't work. But in this case, it looks pretty good. I've glued it to some of that Nina Starburst card stuff with the specks in it. And I'm going to then prop up my sentiment onto the center of the card. It's a very simple card because I'm letting that cutout, the Easter egg cutout, be the focal point. And I'm going to now add some of these dark blue Nouveau drops to just complete the card. Okay, and for card number 29, what I've decided to do is just use that big um, cutout that was part of the cutout page, trim the sides off, and I'm just going to, because I want to separate, I don't want to hide that whole background, which is that confetti. To be honest, I kind of, feel bad that I even covered it up because I really like the confetti background. Um, but uh, I'm just going to take some adhesive or a foam adhesive tape and I'm going to prop up the big piece, the big cutout, and then I'm going to leave the small strips behind and that just kind of gives it a different uh, dimension to the card. But this card is actually going to be very simple because the cutout has everything on it. It has some gold foil, it has the little care on the bottom, and it has the sentiment. So there's not really much more I need to add to this. And sometimes it's nice if you're looking for very quick cards just to do something like this. Um, just take that cutout and glue it to a piece of paper. <laughs> and that's it. Um, I could add some bells and whistles, but I don't think I do. I think I just leave it that way. Now card 30, I had so many strips left over, so many. And um, I even filled in every single card with a piece of strip just to use them up and I still had all these. So what I did was I kinda took like the Easter basket idea and I weaved all the little strips together. And I just left some of them loose because I like the fact it looks like it's kinda unraveled. And I just taped the back so that the tops are all taped behind and then I, glued it to this piece of paper, uh, to the pattern paper. And I'm just gonna trim the sides off just a bit, just so that they fit centered in the card. But it just creates this neat little effect um, of, a, of a weaved paper, and I really liked it. Um, something different to try, and I think it turned out really nice with it. It's pretty elegant um, with the dark blue and that little teeny sentiment. I finished it off with some gold newel drops, and that's it. Um, that card is actually um, I'm really happy with that one. <clears throat> now, that's all 30 cards, and I'm just going to, at real time, show you one by one all the different cards that were created. I had a lot of fun with this, um, this deck, or this pad, I should say. Um, lots of different Easter colors. Um, they definitely were more on the pink side, that's not a problem, it's just I would like to try different colors. Um, I do love colors, um, but it was fun. And 
it did take a lot longer than I anticipated. When I watched um, Christy Marcotte do it, she says it takes her, I think she said six hours, three, six hours. I can't remember. Three hours. I can't remember. Anyways, and she can just whip through these. Um, this took a lot of time. Of course, I am doing it an hour here and an hour there during after work, but it took a long time. And but I enjoyed it. I definitely enjoyed it. Um, I can see how you can create a bunch of cards and, and clean up your paper pads that you may have lying around. Luckily, I don't have too many. Um, but I also got to play around with lots of different little techniques, new dyes, inks, um, die cuts that I've created myself, just playing with a whole bunch of different um, elements. And this really allows me to grow. It allows me to learn what works and what doesn't. So I really hope you enjoyed this. Um, if it created any inspiration, that's awesome. Um, but I don't really want to go into the 50 minutes, so I'm going to call, call it now. Um, thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you all soon. Take care. Bye.